Hello YouTube, my name is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and welcome to the Pipe Bomb. Okay, so welcome to the Pipe Bomb. This is episode 5, I believe, and basically about an hour or so ago, uh, Panda put on my Discord server. Uh, DH is going to record another Pipe Bomb later, any topic suggestions. And i got to say thank you to all you guys that have got back to her. Uh, a lot of you guys are put on my Discord server, which I've got on my screen right now, uh, on my second monitor, some topics that we can talk about for today's uh, Pipe Bomb. I've actually got so many topics that what I'm going to probably do is split them into two videos. So you can think of it like a part one or a part two, or I guess in this case this is part five, and then the next lot of questions will be in part six. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit, otherwise this will be like two hours long, and I cannot upload two hour long videos because my internet is shit. Um, before I go any further though, I just want to say a massive thank you to my awesome patrons. There will be a patron special video, the monthly ones that I do, going up on the channel soon should be some point this week um so keep an eye out on that guys if you're interested uh, i've got some ideas for giveaways as well which i want your feedback on so let me know about that as well if you want to follow me on social media guys then everything which is there um patreon twitter youtube gaming discord facebook and everything else uh, i got referral links for uh, green man gaming as well and uh, king Gwyn. it's all in the description below guys so uh, go into the description below if you're a new subscriber as well thank you for subscribing also check out the description because everything you need to know about the channel is there pretty much so be sure to go over there and check all that out so today's topics i'm thinking we'll do the topic submitted by house of the julia which is small youtubers who act like they have a million subs um <laughs> we've got one from athelstan which is why moist uh, why moist is a word and <laughs> I think we'll then finish up on then the topic which uh, Anua Dayden has brought up, which is kind of a generalised topic of sort of uh, Fallout Metro 2333 and uh, The Walking Dead. It's about uh, why do post-apocalyptic worlds oppose factions based on race, gender, etc. And basically what's my thoughts on this and, and how, he, how he thinks we'd survive. So I'll try and bring up some sort of scenario into this video about that. Then, um, in the next one we do after this, I will be talking about uh, Mr. Flopples, Floppy D, prone to be in Floppy's um, question about uh, World Wars. Um, that kind of comes into the discussion of, like, Apocalypse, I, I guess you could argue, with sort of, like, Fallout 4, like a World War 3 scenario. I'm, I know TJ Dwarf has mentioned World War 3 and Apocalypse stuff in the past as well, so and I know he's got involved in this conversation on Discord, so I'm thinking we'll do a separate video for that. And by all means, guys, if you want to drop some more um, topics and suggestions, let me know in the comment section below, and we will do a feature on stuff like that then in the next part. So we'll start off with uh, House of the Julia's first topic then, and that is small YouTubers who act like they have a million subs. Do you know, I see this all the time. I see this all the time on YouTube, um, and you could probably argue that I'm one of them as well, because I've recently hit 4,000 subscribers. I didn't make a big deal of it either. I used to make a big deal about hitting my milestones all the time. Um, when I had 1,000, I, ma I made a big video about it saying thank you to everyone, which is fair enough. did the same when I hit 2,000. I did the same when I hit 3,000. I also used to do it when I hit like 2,500. Um, I've just stopped doing it now because I feel like with YouTube, as long as you're uploading content, even if it's like the worst, shittest content ever, as long as you've done something right as far as a, a title, and some sort of form of content, you will get some people subscribing, um, you know, at some point or another. For example, with my channel, I've been quite inactive um, as far as video creating goes compared to what I used to be. Whereas before, I was uploading videos constantly. You know, I'd have something good up on plan for a Monday, something for a Wednesday, something for a Friday. I'd keep doing that for like four weeks. And while, while those are going up, I'm... Ooh, bit microphone. I'm busy um, recording other stuff and I'm, I've got some streams planned and I'm sort of doing the whole around the clock thing. But whereas um, if, you've, if you're uploading something and you've got, you've got content going up and you've got a title, you will get subs. My point is that I've had videos going up for a long period of time and that have been um, titled and stuff correctly that um, when it comes to a point where I'm not doing anything for about three or four weeks, my subs will still go up. My subs will still go up because I've got existing videos on my channel. Um, and it's almost like I don't have to work. Not, not so much I don't have to work for it, but um, I can just sit back and watch my sub count. Go, not, 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 not shoot up or anything, but it'll go from, say, 4,010 to 4,013. Then by the end of the week, it might be on 4,015. And then the second week, which I haven't done any videos at all, it might see up go up to 4,020. By this point, it might drop slightly because I might have lost three, three or four subs that are inactive, and they might go back up again. And then by the time I actually go, by the third week when I go to actually record something, 
um, I, I would have seen an increase of about 20 subs. And I, have done, I haven't done any videos for like three weeks or two weeks. So um, it does happen. You do end up going up by sort of subs over a period of time slowly if you don't do sort of videos. Um, but as far as the question at hand, which is small YouTubers who act like they have a million subs, I feel like you do see quite a lot of it on YouTube. Um, I mean, how can I put it? There's sort of... Um, does YouTube like okay? I'll use myself as an example because I I don't mind hanging myself out to dry. I've like I said, I've got four thousand subs. I've got referral links in the, in the description below. I've got like a professional, well, not not professional, but I've got Instagram which is representing the channel. I've got a Discord server which represents the channel. I've got a Facebook page which represents the channel. Um, I got a, I got a Patreon. I've got PayPal links. I've got a list of rules and stuff in the description below. I'm a co I'm basically conducting myself in a way. Where I'm trying to come across as quite professional and trying to look legit, basically, so that if anybody does come across my channel and likes what they see, then hopefully they would hit the subscribe button and uh, continue to watch my videos and my my streams, and my content. Um, but I feel like there's a fine line, and you can easily get confused between looking professional and looking kind of or, or thinking above and beyond your station, perhaps. At the end of the day, I got four thousand subscribers. I'm doing all, all the stuff I just mentioned there and hopefully trying to make a good impression with myself on YouTube. But to some people, that might come across as a as a small YouTuber who, who act like I got a million subs. It might not be, though. At the end of the day, it can it can come down to perception, I, I think. Um, you know, someone who's got like 100 subscribers could come across as a very arrogant arsehole, basically. <laughs> Whereas someone who's got 10,000 subscribers... Maybe the most chill person to come across. I, I'll tell you. I'll give you an example now. Um, one of my favorite YouTubers, and a lot of you guys will know this guy, is Hef. Um, he's a Australian YouTuber that is mainly known for his Mountain Blade content. I'm, I'm quite a quite a Mountain Blade fan, and I used to watch a lot of his Warband stuff uh, back in the day. Uh, his Clash of Kings series, which is the Game of Thrones mod, and Hef has got twenty five over twenty five thousand subs. Yeah, he'll talk to you like he's your best friend, and and he'll. I I don't mean that you know in a patriot in a patronizing kind of way, but like he'll he'll talk to you whoever you are. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a YouTuber with a hundred subs or YouTuber who've just started. He he's actually gone on on onto his channel in the past and done videos helping some of his friends out and, and people he knows, saying, "Hey, look, just give my give my friend whoever a chance. He's just started up now. He's been watching my channel for a few years. He wants to give it a go himself." And he, he's gone out of his way to help people, and he's. 25,000 subs in a community where he's kind of he's fairly well known. He's one of the one of the the higher up kind of channels if if you will. Um and, you know you, and you look at the, on the flip side of that you'll come across channels which have just started out or channels that are you know 100 subs or so which are just you know arrogant pricks. I think it's 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 one of those sort of questions which is quite um you can generalize it to quite a lot of different things. Um you know there are a lot of YouTubers out there there are a lot of different opinions out there. Um, what, what my advice would be is don't judge a book by its cover. I'd always give someone a chance first um, as a YouTuber. If it's a, you know, I know first impressions mean a lot, but there's been YouTubers I've been surprised about, streamers particularly, where I've come across them and I'm thinking, oh my God, what a fucking arsehole. I don't like this guy at all. And then <laughs> two months later, I've, I've spoken to them on numerous occasions and you know, from, through streams, through raids and stuff. And by the end of it, I'm thinking... They're really fucking good. They're actually really good at what they do. They talk to me all the time, blah, blah, blah. And then there's some people which I thought were really, really good streamers or YouTubers. And now I'm thinking, you know what? Well, don't want to bother. They, they, I just don't like them anymore. They, I don't like what they what they do. I don't like what they stand for. I don't like what they say or something they've said, you know? So it's one of those things. Opinions change all the time. And that's that's what it is at the end of the day, is opinions. Um, so, yeah, that's. I hope that answers your question. If you want me to go into any more detail, let me know. I could do a follow-up uh a follow up on that question, or I can go into it um, in the comment section. Whatever you, whatever you guys want, want me to do with that one. Um, <laughs> next up, we're going to look at uh, Athelstone's uh, question, which is why moist is a word. I'm going to actually Google this now, guys, because uh, I just want to see like if there's any sort of official kind of thing. Uh, moist definition. This is going to come across really weird in my search history as well. Moist adjective slightly wet. The moist fertile soil. <laughs> Medicine marked by a fluid discharge. And what else we got on here? The moist fertile soil of the eyes wet with tears. Her brother's eyes became moist. And then you've got synonyms. Uh, tearful, teary, dewy-eyed, watery, misty. Her dark eyes grew moist. Um, I'm pretty sure that the moist he's referring to is the lucid kind caught between the legs of a young female. 
Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know how to answer why moist is a word. I just looked up the def definition of it on Google, though. Um, and I've given you a few sort of things. Actually, it's got an origin by here. I might be able to work this out now. Origin, Latin, uh, mus mu oh, or mucidus, M-U-C-I-D-U-S, uh, which is Latin, into Old French, which is moist, M-O-I-S-T-E. It looks like there was another word called mustim, which turned into must, and then so you've got then the, the old French of mollus or, or mulst, and the English of must, and together that's sort of late Middle Ages turned into moist. I just worked it out somehow, guys. It actually comes up when you type it in, so I just saw that on there, guys. So there we go. That's me doing it live for you guys, working out what moist means. So it's come from Latin, Old French, and English, and the late Middle Age, the word moist became. So there we go. Just. Just answered that question. <laughs> that was fucking weird. Okay, we'll end up with the final. We'll end off on the final topic now, guys. I don't want these videos to go on too long. Like I said at the start of the video, uh, and most of you guys know this as well, especially my patrons. There's a you know patrons of the channel. My upload speed is terrible. So if this is if this is like a half hour to an hour long, then it's something which will take all day or, or you know, and I, I mean that it'll take like eight or nine hours. I I have to, I have to set these videos up uh, as I go to work, and then you know it becomes a pain in the ass. So. Uh, uh, yeah, so we'll end up with the final topic. It's submitted by uh, Anua, Anua Daiden. And he basically said about the apocalypse. So why do post-apocalyptic worlds uh, oppose factions based on race, gender, etc.? Think Fallout, Metro, The Walking Dead. Does survival really mean the absence of civility and the end of civilization? Um, so I've never played Metro 2033, but it's probably something I'd enjoy. I have played the Telltale Walking Dead games. I have played Fallout 4. Never played the other Fallout games, which is a big shock probably to some of you. I wanted to probably get New Vegas and 3 because they look good and I like Fallout 4, so I'm probably going to like them as well. Um, although I've read up quite a lot of the lore and stuff, um, there's actually a good channel out there which has got... Um, it's, an, it's called Alternative History or Alternative History Hub. If you type in Fallout 4, Alternative History, the channel will come up anyway. It's like the top result. And he did a very good um, video on the history of Fallout 4. It's a paid promotion when, before Fallout 4 was released, basically. But he basically went over all the, the lore and stuff. So um, quite quite well-versed with that. And I'm a big fan of the Walking Dead TV series as well. And I'm also um, I'm familiar with the comics as well. So I'm, I'm, I got quite a bit of, you know, quite a bit of knowledge when it comes to this kind of topic. Uh, why do post-apocalyptic worlds oppose factions on based on race and gender? I just think it's it's um, fight or flight. It's it's sort of your natural uh, instinct as a human. So uh, I know there's other races involved here, but I'm going to go from a sort of human point of view. If you take The Walking Dead, for example, you've got sort of... I'm going to try and do this as spoiler-free as I possibly can. I will warn you guys, though, that... Um, uh, yeah, I, I can probably do it without, without uh, ruining a few guys, so it should be okay. But I was going to just say that if you're not caught up with The Walking Dead, then then watch with caution. But I'm going to try and do this without spoiling it, so don't worry, guys. Um, got Rick Grimes, Rick Grimes, who's the leader of, of the of the, the group, you know, the main group you see throughout the series. Obviously, that group changes. People people get killed off. It's The Walking Dead. People are going to die. People join because they meet new camps and stuff. Um, and they're seen as the good guys. But you've got to look at that kind of morality. Are they the good guys? Because Rick kills people. They've taken on people. They've, um, you know, they've, they've they've stolen from people. They've they've ambushed people. You've got to think of it like there's no law in this world of of, of the Walking Dead. You know, the zombies are, are the are <laughs> the zombies are the enemy basically, um, but they're not because humans basically form their own factions, their own survival groups. They sh you know their own ideals. You look at some of the leaders that you've had in the Walking Dead series. Uh, so you've got like the governor. You've got Negan. They all have very similar ideals. They want to be the head kind of honcho, whereas in the in the natural world, without the Walking Dead, they're probably a nobody, another faceless office clerk, or another you know, another actor, or or another person working down the shop in Tesco's, checking your your crisps in for one ninety nine because you got a good two for one deal. I don't know. Um, you know, they're just regular people. Whereas in this world. They've been able to better themselves. They've been able to um, form their own group based on their ideals. And people will follow them. Because in, in time of survival, you look for leadership. And if someone's ready to, or someone's willing to stand up and say, look, I'm going to take charge here, um, people people will. Because, in, you know, <laughs> it's fight or flight. Do you, do you risk it on your own? Because, um, you know, your community just been wiped out. Your village where you used to live for the past 20 years 
no one's left from there anymore because zombies have just ambushed it. You've just ran across now 20 miles or so over the past, like, you know, however long. You've come across this guy who hasn't killed you as you've come across him. You can see he's got a few people there already, and he's saying, join us. And you're thinking, ah, I'm going to join you because my people are dead back there. My village is dead. I don't know what's got, what the hell's going on. People are just dying everywhere. So that's what you do. It's fight or flight. You join. Over time, you probably share those ideals. You'd follow this person because they they're showing you how to survive and and what to sort of do in a zombie apocalypse. And unfortunately, what that person might think is right or wrong probably isn't because you they might you know be killing humans, which of course is wrong. Um, but in, in the world of The Walking Dead, it's not because the zombies are the main evil, really. But I always think that the zombies aren't the main evil. They 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 part of the the part of the plot. They're part of the the set in the other. They're a big part of it, obviously. But um, it's it's the Walking Dead has never been about the zombies for me. It's been more about um, the the perceptions of people, the the sort of emotional kind of attachment you have with people, and and what you would do in that situation. You know, um, <laughs> I made a funny story with Panda before where I said that um, <laughs> I would I would literally pack a bag full of um my my bowls so i got like uh, i play i mentioned before i play lawn bowls and i've got a set of four bowls i stick them in my in my bag i, I just raise sort of the food i got a an indian sword replica indian sword which probably wouldn't be that good it's, it's not that sharp but i'd use it as a weapon anyway i'd grab that and i'd basically go straight to the nearest uh, police station which is a few miles away just go straight there and raid that for any supplies so in my head i've already got an idea of what i'd do what would you guys do? Where, you know, wherever you live now, you guys that are listening to this and watching this, what would be the first thing you would do in a zombie apocalypse? Because I'm quite interested to know that, because it's quite an interesting topic. It's something which, um, you know, I am interested in. I mentioned I, I played Fallout, and I really enjoy Fallout 4. Um, I played it a couple of times now, um, and um, I streamed it not so long ago. And with Fallout 4, my phone's actually going off. My phone's going off live, guys. My phone's going off live. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, it's panda ringing me. It's panda ringing me. Damn that panda. Um, with Fallout 4, the thing is, I can't concentrate now because she's ringing me constantly. With Fallout with Fallout 4, I've played it a couple of times, like I said. And the first time I played it, I was crap and I died. I didn't die in the first part where you've got the, the large cockroaches, the mutated cockroaches, but I died. Um, I can't remember how long into the game I was. I think I was about 25 minutes in. I'd gone above ground. I'd done a few things. Um, but I kind of went off on my own and, and didn't stick to the sort of plot. I didn't have much in the way of arm, arm, ammo and guns and stuff, and I got wiped out quite quite easily because I'm I'm a low level and I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, which is probably a fair representation. Now, I know if you go into like a survival game like the Fallout Four, play it on a challenging difficulty and go into it with no preconceived ideas or no knowledge of the game whatsoever, you're probably going to die early on. Whereas the second time I played it, I knew exactly where where things were. Um, and that's because I'm familiar with the surroundings, and that's what it's like. If you're familiar with your surroundings and, you, and you've got a, you're in tune with what's going on, then you've got a pretty decent chance of surviving. Whereas, if you go into something blind, then you're probably going to get killed off, aren't you? There's lots of there's lots of things like I could I could literally dedicate one of these sort of videos. I could just do a separate video, not a pipe bomb, but just a zombie apocalypse kind of thing, and just talk about it. Um, what I would like to do is probably a video where you guys get involved and perhaps say. You know, give me your stories of what you would do in a, what you would do in a zombie apocalypse, and then I can say like, right, I think you would die first. I think Anua will survive because of whatever. I think HS will do this. Panda will do this, and that, I think that'd be quite fun. So maybe we'll do something like that at some point if you guys are interested, or if you've got any ideas, let me know that as well. It's an interesting topic though, um, the apocalypse and and what it means, and and it means something for it means something different for every single person. I think so. It is quite an interesting thing to. Uh, to discuss i think we'll probably end this one here like i said in the next one now we will be talking about sort of um tj dwarf and uh, prone being floppies kind of ideas that we've got on my discord right now of uh world war so i said world war two is it or just as i said world war world wars wars in general um and about loved ones that's going to be a topic for the next one and if you've got any other topics additional stuff that you want me to bring into it uh let me know uh, uh, in the comment section below guys and we can talk about that in further detail hope you guys have enjoyed this i try not to ramble too much i'm trying to keep it on point as best i can i've basically, I've basically just brought up the, the questions on discord on my monitor by here I've just gone boop boop and then just talked without having any sort of preconceived ideas of what i was going to say so uh, hopefully you guys like that i've been dragon heart the prince of wales thank you for watching until next time goodbye